In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord, the grace, peace, and love of the risen Christ to be with all of you. And, and with your spirit. Today as we gather to celebrate our saint today is Saint Anselm. Anselm was a Benedictine around the 11th century, um, became bishop, uh, uh, was an advisor or connected with the, the kings of the time, both, and, and, uh, um, and in the midst of that, of course, there was controversy and there was conflict between the king of the country of England and, um, and himself, and he was exiled several times, but stood for his faith and belief in Christ. So as we gather today, we ask ourselves, are we standing for our faith, our belief? Are we standing and living in the love of Christ? For those times for our sins when we've not, let us seek our Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are risen from the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the way to the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you're the word made flesh dwelling among us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Enable us, we pray, Almighty God, to proclaim the power of the risen Lord, that we who have received the pledge of his gift may come to possess all he gives when it is fully revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We turn our attention to our scriptures again today as we continue in the New Testament and the early uh, church and the forming of the early church. We ask ourselves, how, how are we able to share? A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that, they, that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds to the, of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Thus Joseph, also named by the Apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite, a Cypriot by birth, sold a piece of property that he owned, then brought the money and put it at the feet of the Apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robed. Robed is the Lord and girl, girt about with strength. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. And he has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old. From everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness benefits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is king, robed in majesty. The Son of Man. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It's a continuation of yesterday's gospel uh, regarding Nicodemus. Jesus said to Nicodemus, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. 
so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this be? Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand this. Amen, amen, I say to you. We speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly dwellings, and you do not, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses was lifted up, as, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In, uh, in the first reading in the Acts of the Apostles, they're working on the, the early community coming together, holding everything in common, living like one large family. Isn't it a great idea? We'll pool all our resources. Nobody will go out. We'll just live as one large family. Boy, isn't that a challenge. You know, but it's a challenge in the, in the local level, in the household level, especially in this uncertain time of employment and and other things happening. It's, it's challenge in the community level, and the city level. Um, how, how do we live this and care, especially for those who, who uh, don't have enough and those who are poor on the state level and on a government, on a country level, on the, on the federal government, and on the world level. To be able to share, say that we're gonna share so everybody has enough. Isn't that a huge challenge in our world? So my two thoughts today, first thought uh, works on this. And that's where we're in that call of stewardship. Am I generous in, in returning to God what God has given to me? Um, and we're, we're not at that level of we'll just put everything at the feet of the disciples. And, and it's, but in a way, we are. Because what we have and, and how we share it and how we use it. I'm going to challenge us to look at that sense today, especially of stewardship. Stewardship of sharing. For the resources that I have, what will I do with them? And how do I share them so that others may have some? And I see people giving. I know we're doing the food program out of, out of the parish here, helping with breakfast and lunches for, for, for quite a number of people each day. We see it happening in our public school. Um, there's variations of the food pantry running. Um, I was out for a walk on the south side of town and found one of these little libraries, and it had food inside of it, and a note in the front that said, uh, um, if you're in need, if you're in hungry. So in, in ways, we are striving to do this. So we want to challenge ourselves, how are we doing it? When we get the stimulus check, if we're eligible for one, will we return any part of that to God? Time to be thinking about that. Time to recognize that goal of that early community and say, centuries later, how are we doing as a community and helping others? So that's kind of the first thought, to kind of grasp that sense of stewardship, of sharing, that sense of what am I doing, how am I steward with everything that is God has given me? And am I sharing that so that all may simply live? And the second thought connects to the gospel. Uh, I like in the gospel how um, in, in the midst of it, uh, it says, the wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you do not where you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. The wind blows where it wills, you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. You know, just two days ago, we were 50 going on 60 degrees. Today, we're talking 30s. Maybe we'll get, doesn't the wind blow in different directions, and cold, but that's just to remind us again, I believe, that it helps us, it reminds us that we're not the ones in charge, that God is the one in charge. And Nicodemus here is encountering Jesus. We're in the third chapter of John, so this is early in Jesus' ministry. Nicodemus, um, Nicodemus, as we heard yesterday, and then we'll hear some more tomorrow about him, Nicodemus is that certainly is steeped in the Jewish law and the tradition and knows exactly how this should work. You know, there's rules on how this comes together. And along comes Jesus saying, the wind's going to blow you in a different direction. It's going to move, and you don't have control over it. Isn't that hard? Isn't that, you know, if, if I was in charge, you know, this pandemic would be over, and we'd be back to normal life. But we're not in charge. The wind is blowing in different directions. So what is the key to all this? 
comes to the end of the gospel. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, calling all the people to lift up their praise and their attention to God, Jesus Christ lifted up on the cross and calls us to that sense of gazing upward, of, of allowing ourselves to be lifted up with Jesus and dying on the cross and rising to eternal life. So as we recognize that call and that wind, um, we just stop complaining about the weather. There are warm days coming. Just live in that hope. But ask ourselves, what is in the midst of this that is so difficult that I need to lift up to the Lord today and bring that problem, bring that challenge, bring that person, bring that relationship, bring that need of whatever it is to our Lord and allow yourself to be lifted up to our God. invite you to rise up and lift up our needs and our prayers to our God. For the church and all believers, may the Holy Spirit always be our guide. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civil and religious leaders, may God speak wisdom into their hearts as Jesus did for Nicodemus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are trapped in physical or spiritual bondage, may life in the Spirit lead to freedom and redemption. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God inspire us in our life of community, prayer, and generosity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may God lead them into the glory of his kingdom remembering especially Pat and Bob Brink. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us lift up the needs of one another, whatever it is in our hearts that we need to be lifted up on the cross today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And let us now pray our prayer of St. Joseph. Good St. Joseph, as you led the Holy Family, watch over our families. Help our family and all families to know and share God's love. In our family relationships, may we find healing and seek to be holy. May our fathers help us to become faithful disciples of Jesus, who share our love for him. As foster father of Jesus, watch over all who serve as spiritual fathers. In a special way, bless our Holy Father, our bishop, and our priest. May they follow your humble example in their fatherly care for the people of God, the Church. With Mary, you raised up Jesus the High Priest. You know our need for priests. Please raise up good and holy priests from our families to serve the people of our diocese. And may our children and grandchildren hear and say yes to the call of Jesus, just as you and Mary did. Good St. Joseph, pray Amen. for us. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received this bread. We offer you fruit of the earth, work of human hands, and to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received this wine. We offer you fruit of the vine, work of human hands, and to become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the, the Lord, Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of the light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and his rising is the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and the heavenly powers with your angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Today, today we're going to use Eucharistic Prayer 4, which talks more about the covenants. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great. And you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care. So that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the domain of death. But you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and time again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son, to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful of heart joy, and to accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death. And rising from the dead he restored death and restored life. and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits of all who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the poor. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these gifts, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of his great mercy, which he himself left us as an eternal command. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into the body of the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. 
Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice. Especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, the whole order of bishops and all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, and your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. And now let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of a Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Hear, O Lord, our prayers that His most holy, this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us 
may bring your help in this present life and ensure us of eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, I pray that you have a nice day. Um, don't look to the warm weather, but rather look to the sunshine. Look to the warmth of God in our life and in our world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.